read? Yes, read it. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, Salatu wa Salam, Ala Rasulihi al-Kareem, Thumma Mada. We continue um, with our second lesson fi Rus al-Lughat al-Arabiyya, the lessons in the Arabic language. The last class, and this is a review, we mentioned some of the words. MashaAllah, oh boy, even makes my handwriting look good. <laughs> yeah, that looks clear to play. Mm -hmm. Notice I said makes my handwriting. It's not really <laughs> handwriting. It makes. So here, these are some of the words that we had on the first time when we talked about the Arabic language. And I thought that, again, it would be beneficial to talk about the language from this perspective. Because normally, when we talk about a language, they bring a little bit about the people and their language as well. And this is tied directly to understanding why the language is the way it is, talking about the people who are from that language. So <coughs> we bought these words. The first one is Araba. Can we say Araba? Araba. 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 Then you have the second word here. This is one. Name. This is the last one. The second word, number two, is Urubu. 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 Then you have the third word, Awraba. 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 Because this here signifies two of the letters that is above. And the rule for that is when you have two letters, you stop on the first one. And you pronounce the second one. So out, you can hear the first raw. Out, and then raw. Out, raw. Out, raw. So it becomes out, raba. Out, raba. And that's this third word. Then you have the fourth word here. Arabaton. Can you say Arabaton? Arabaton. 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 I'll come back and explain it. Word. You have the fifth word, Hamas, Yani Arabiyatun. 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 You say Arabiyatun. 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 And then you have here, ah, because this you don't pronounce ah. Rob, ah, rob, ah, rob, ah, rob. You say Ahra. 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 Yeah, you don't want people saying Ahra. With air, you don't want to say Ahra. Ahra. Because the Ain meant Wasat al Halaqi. It's from the middle of the throat. You have letters that are at the top, the middle, and the bottom. Ain and Wasat al is from the middle of the throat. Therefore, if you say Ah, Ah, ah. If you put your hand on your chest and say ah, 
Ah, ah, shouldn't ah, feel the pulsating ah, beat mm -hmm. on your chest. Ah, 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 ah. ah. That's ah. how you know you're saying it from the right place. Oh. Oh. When you say Araba, <clears throat> one of the meanings that they give in the English dictionary, if you go to the Mowrit, Mowrit is spelled. popular modern Arabic to English dictionary. Meaning you go look the word up like this, ain, raw, ba, and then they give you some of the context in English. You can also go to hands where. This is another famous dictionary from Arabic to English. You look the word up at the beginning of the page on the top, and you follow down the column until you come to the word that you want to find. And then they give you the different contexts in English. Araba, yani, means to go. To go. To travel. Araba, Araba means to go? To go. Dr. Araba. Mm -hmm. Means to go, G-O. Or to, um, as they say, um, um, traverse, to, to travel or to go. Then you have urbu, urbu. Also, another form of the word, which means, yeah, I need mean, the same thing, to go, to travel. If you look on the, on the sheet, mm -hmm. you will find urbu. Orbo, who can locate Orbo. And I have numbers because they want index cards and I copy them. Of the dumb Orbo. It should be like on the second page. Right here. Orbo. Orbo. Mm -hmm. What do you see what we have for Orbo in English? Should be English word there. Mm -hmm. Orbo. What do we have? It is right here. Orbo. I don't see the English. Should be next to it, aside from it. Okay. Orbo. Orbo. Araba. Urubu. Yeah, he did. Um, Araba. It should have English Caribbean. word there. Yeah, English right here. What did it say? Araba. No, Urubu with the Dhamma. Mm -hmm. Come on, Zamir. <laughs> What's that? Araba with the Dhamma. You dumb. have your paper, you just turn it in front of the You Araba with the Dhamma. Mm -hmm. Right here. Araba, right here it is, right here. What do we say it means in English? What's there? Oh, that. <clears throat> Something in Moy? Courage Van? Courage Van. Courage Van. Courage Van. Courage Van. So here, well, Araba means to go or to yani, change, you know, or to transverse. Here they tell you Urubu, yani caravan. Uh -huh. Some say yani vehicle. Some have mentioned yani like Qatar, which means the train, the railroad. Some have mentioned yani. A um, wagon, van, like this. This is horrible. Then you have Araba. Araba should be there to make. It should be on the last page. To make. Yani. Should be Apa. Yani. It should be Araba. Means to make. To money. give earnest. You see it? Money. Mm -hmm. Money. Araba. So Araba. So what's the significance be between Araba and Urubu and Araba? They were going, coming and going, trading, moving around. The Ilafi Quraysh. Ilafihim rihlata shita iwa sayf. Talking about the Quraysh. And Allah swore by them how he provided for them. Fi shata, which means winter, or sayf, summer. When it got too cold in Mecca, they traveled to the warmer climates. Because again, they were trading outside. They didn't have a Walmart. They didn't have Kmart. They didn't have Family Dollar. They didn't have Sam's. They didn't have 7-Eleven, Quick Trip, and all of these convenience stores that we have today. All of their stuff was outside. Back in New York, the vendors on the street, you know, that sell their merchandise. This was, yeah, I need why they had a caravan. This is why they had horrible. Because Urubu. this stuff had to be with them traveling. On top mm -hmm. of the camel, 
inside of a wagon. Al-Rabba was why they went to do that travel. They went to make money. Al-Rabba, which means to make. If you put the Shadda over what here is Araba, if you add this, you change it from Araba to Araba, that means to make something. To make something. So they were making trade. Where here it means just to go, to travel. Here it means the caravan, the wagon, what they were traveling in and the action that they were doing, following one another. And then here is the actual transaction, Araba. Then when you go from there to Arabatun, Arabatun, this is another meaning when we're talking about something going. Arabatu. Arabatu yet, we mentioned before. Uh -huh. Arabatu yet is when Arabatu means yani bit harik, we say. Haraka is when something moves. Like Allah said, La tuharak bilisani li ta'jalabi. Don't say the Quran with your tongue in order to preserve it in your heart. Inna ali no Qur'ana, mother, inna. It's upon us to preserve the Quran in your heart, O Muhammad. Because when Jibreel was teaching him, he was trying to, and you find people doing this, you're trying to teach them, and they're trying to eagerly say it, to memorize it. No, take it easy, listen. Let it settle in your heart, then repeat it. So Allah told the Prophet not to do that, not to harak, hastily try to say it. We are the ones who are going to preserve it in your heart. Mm -hmm. So to harak means to move. So, when we talk about here, Arabi, Arabatun, that means to hurry to move. That's why here again, the word Araba here, to transverse, to go. Urbu, the caravan, the wagon, people you know, with their goods. Araba is the action. You actually now making the transaction. Arabatun. <coughs> Means again something that somebody uses, and we said ism. We were talking last time one of the three parts of speech is ism. Arabatu can be used for anything that's mobile. So if you want to say baby carriage, arabatu is used for that. The baby stroller, arabatu. They call it arabatu. Atafal. Atafal means baby or tiflun. So arabatu plus atafal means baby carriage. Why? Because it's moving from the word araba. Arabatu. Arabatu, yes. It's a different version of the word here. Don't get lost and confused. That's why we started here. The origin of all of this is ain raw back. Mm hmm. Uh -huh. Then they give you another version, they change the harakat around. The uh, fact that this changed from a fatta to a dhamma, yeah. the fact that this changed from a fatta to a sukun, uh -huh. no vow, and this one changed from a fatta to a dhamma in itself is arabah. Uh -huh. Because it moved. The harakat moved. Harakat means to move. So this moved from that to this. That's tahara. Uh -huh. This moved from that to this. That's tahara, to move. And this move from that to this, tahara, all of this is indicative to Arabic. So when we talk about Arabia, the Arabic language, what does that mean? A language that moves like the people used to move. From Feta to Dhamma to Kaswa to Sukun. Well, English doesn't do that. You have a T, a T is a T. Either it's capital, um, as they say, the... Uh, or the lower case. But doesn't move, but he is moving. Dhamma fatta kasra sukun araba urubu araba. So these words are indicative to the language and it's teaching you about the people. How Allah made their language like their lifestyle so that they would be occupied. There was no radio, there was no electronic games, no TV. They, what do you think they were doing in the valley? And the no man just know, had to do something. 
how do you think they made the living and how they ate? They had to do something. So they used to go, when they got too cold to hustle in Mecca, to Syria. When they got too cold to hustle in Mecca, to Yemen. They used to trade and go to India. This is before Islam, before the prophets even born. This is what the people were doing who were called Arab. So you can see now how they became Arab. Because they are the people who are moving, Araba, Robu, they have their goods with them, caravan, and Araba to make money. Hakada. Hmm? Hakada. Sahih. MashaAllah. Hakada means like this. He learned that from me because I always say it in the football, like he learned stole to Rasul. MashaAllah. <laughs> so, Arabatun, basically, Arabatun, yet wheelbarrow. Wheel, wheel, wheelbarrow. It's Arabatu. If you want to talk about the automobile outside, you say, Aina Arabat, Aina Arabia. Aina Arabia too, or Aina Arabatu. Where's the car? This is used for vehicle too. So when you say train, Arabatun. Car, Arabatun. Yani stroller, Arabatun. Wheelbarrow, Arabatun. Anything that moves, that transport, can take that meaning. Huh. We know Sayara. To mean car, truck, but you don't find people using Arabia too all the time. But Arabs they use it. Arabatu. Oh here Arabatun. Then you have Arabiya too. This is additional, the Ya here. If you look here, it's Ain, Ra, Ba, and this what's called a ta marabuta. Meaning it's not an open tie with two dots. It's closed. That's the difference between the upper tie and this tie. Okay? Where it ties like this, and then tie is like this. Mm -hmm. This is open and this is marabuta. Marabut, something that's tied. You can see it's like, you know, like you tie a knot. Marabuta. Marabut. Tie marabuta because it's closed up. So this is open tie. So here, this is extra, the ya. The ya is not here. Arabiyatu. Arabiyatun. Tayyip. You have a'rab, which is indicative to the people. Wa min al a'rab, Allah said in the Quran. Al a'rab shat the kufran, Allah said. Wa min al a'rab, and from the Arabs, meaning those people who used to travel, they're not settled in a city. Their life is always on the run, carrying their goods to make trade with their vehicle, mode of transportation, Arabia to their language because it's moving from Dhamma Kesra, from this form to that form, to this form to that form, Arab, the people who do that. And Arab, Ashid to Kufran, Allah said they are the most stubborn, those people. Because look at their lifestyle. <coughs> you're living somewhere remote with no civilization around you you're going to be harsh like the man grabbed the prophet of Islam and said yeah Muhammad ain't there choking them like this be just he came and asked the prophet for something they were already gathering the goods that they had you know amongst themselves from the Ghanima from the spoils of war and came Prophet gave him, he wasn't satisfied. Mm -hmm. You ask the prophet, he gave you. You think the prophet going to give you something that's a uh, yani injustice? He's the messenger. Allah described him as yani uh, uh, Adim, the best, the greatest character. Allah described him as yani bil mu'minina, yani raufun, yani. Yani Allah Rahim. <coughs> He's very most merciful and compassionate towards the people. You think you're going to ask him for something? You know, I need car fare. He's going to give you 50 cents. He's going to give you a 20. You only need a dollar. You take this. Get you some lunch too and have a few dollars in your pocket, for example. You come ask for something, you need a shirt. He's just going to give you a shirt with a hole here stain. He's going to give you the best shirt. Here's an Izar. Here's some sandals. It's a problem. 
Come ask the prophet, prophet, give him, he get mad, say, yeah, Muhammad, it did. Grab him from the back like this. Of course, the Sahaba was like this, drawing the swords. What we're about to do? <laughs> grab the messenger like that. And in some of the narration, the hadith said, the prophet was being choked. The man, somebody grabbed him from the back off guard like this. Omar, you know Omar was ready to put that thing on. About to stop him. Give him what he want. Give him what he want. This is what we said. Sometimes you got to say something. It doesn't have to be harsh. It doesn't have to be, you know, problematic. But sometimes you can't just do action. You have to articulate. It said, no, stop. Give him what he want. Get rid of this fool. Give him what he want. Let him go. You want more? Give more. It's done you. Back. What is with Allah is everlasting. This is dunya. Give him more, he want more. La bas. When that man left, al Arab the kufran, as Allah said, the Arabs, these people who travel, who take their caravan, who they trade, they have their mode of transportation. This is their language. It changed from Dhamma to Kesra, Sukun, from this verb scale to that verb scale. They are the most stubborn, Allah said. Look at this here. Is this not Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaking the truth? Most stubborn. The prophet gave him and he's still tripping. Hmm. So give him what he wants. When he left, the prophet said, You shall see from that man, his name is Dhu Qawaisim. Look at the Bukhari Muslim, Dhu Qawaisim. He said, You shall see from that man, the descendants. Later on in life, they will make the Muslim who's Inside of Islam, of course, outside of Islam, like the fastest arrow shooting from the bow. What did he mean by that? Those people are going to come in a time where you drink, but Muslims drink. They're human. They fall into sin. They do wrong like everybody else. They shouldn't do it. Islam doesn't say it's okay, but Muslim, a person who has decided to acknowledge Allah is my creator, I should obey him, and we are going to be resurrected by him, he can drink and still be Muslim. This person he drinks, the descendants of that man who told the prophet be just, al-A'rab, as Allah mentioned, those people that we described, the Arabs, they were the most severe in being stubborn, they're the most stubborn, rebellious, this don't mean they're the only. They're from amongst the people who are the most rebellious. As people came before them and after them that may match them or outdo them in stubbornness. The prophet said, from that man who grabbed them like that, people want to make Muslims unjustifiably outside of Islam. Why do you think they want to make them outside of Islam? The Rahim. Arrogance. Arrogance. Barakallahu faith. That's a good one. Arrogance. What is arrogance? Of Salam, he said in Sahih Muslim, Al Kibru, which is the word that we normally use to translate to Arabic, Yani Batr al Haq, to reject the truth. And belittling the people. <clears throat> so they thought they knew the religion better than the Sahaba. They rejected the truth. And they looked down on them. We're righteous. Look, you're drinking or you're doing this. And we're not saying Sahaba drank. Let's get this straight. We said they argued with the Sahaba because they was arguing with Ali ibn Abi Talib, Abdullah ibn Abbas. They were arguing with yani, those Sahaba that we know, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, ibn Umar. They thought they knew the deen better than them, so they argued with him. This is rejecting the truth. They know the deen better than anybody because they was with the messenger. You came later, after Abu Bakr, after Uthman. And we skipped Umar ibn al-Khattab. Go back. Abu Bakr, Uthman. No, Abu Bakr, who was after that? Umar. Umar, Umar. Umar. Mm -hmm. Then Uthman. One mm -hmm. oh, of you guys, you need your Dunkin' Donuts. Then <laughs> say Abu Bakr. <laughs> and then say Uthman. Come on. No, this is, no disrespect, uh, Starbucks. <laughs> Probably in Canada or upstate New York, Tim Hortons. Mm -hmm. the best coffee. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but they rejected the haq from the Sahaba. Then how did they look down on the people? Those people that were Muslim. You could never say the Sahaba drank wine. 
Never say the Sahaba killed another Sahaba. No. You say a Muslim because what makes a person Sahaba, not only he accepted Islam, this is a part of Aqidah, but we have to mention it because we're talking about Arab, creed. What makes a person Muslim? Dawu. To bear witness that there is no God except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that Muhammad is his messenger. To bear witness that there is no God except Allah. And to act upon mm -hmm. it with the heart. And to have it, to, to have it in the heart, to act, upon the, to, to, to act upon the limbs in your actions, and uh, to the shahadatain. You gave it more. Which one? You said the first, the tongue, now you said the heart and the action. Because it all. It's all. It's all. Because you, you can't have it just to, to say with your lips and not have it upon your actions. What makes a person Muslim, Abdul Hafid? Acting upon their belief, their aqidah. Acting upon it, putting it into action. So you have two things. One person said to profess it on the tongue, of course, has to be in the heart. Then he said, and you got to display it with actions and limbs. And then another person said, act upon the creed of Islam. What makes a person Muslim? For me. As Brother Dawood said, Brother Dawood said, as Brother Dawood said, like, there is no other uh, person, like, apart from Allah, like, who is the righteous one and who actually follows all that thing, like, okay, so who says Allah is the only one? And brother, like, Huzur uh, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the Muhammad and Rasul, and uh, we got to fall in. Hey. So we said there's no body. We don't say person. Hey, that's sorry. a slip of a tongue. Yeah, People say it, that. but we know a there's lot about person. Yeah. But that's a word in English somebody might use on accident. Yeah. We say no body, not person, because no body is general. The yeah. person is singular to humans, specific to humans. Rahim, what makes a person Muslim? I say, I shadow in La Ilaha illallah, I shadow in a Muhammad and Abdullah, Abduhu or Rasulullah. MashaAllah. To say that you bear witness there is no deity worthy of worship except Allah and the Muhammad and Abduhu or Rasulullah. And that the Prophet Muhammad is the servant and the messenger of Allah. Tight. If you want to go extensive, yeah, we'll start talking about what Dawu said. The actions and the lambs and and if you want to go a little more technical when we talk about creed, mm -hmm. the manhaj of Ahlu Sunnah, ulama al Hadith, then yeah, it's still talking about creed like Abdul Hafiz said. Then if you want to do a summary, fiqh and aqidah, then you do like Zamir said, you bring all of it like that. But when we talk about the difference between the levels of a person's Islam, then you do like Abdul Rahim said, it's just your statement. Yani, that there is no deity worthy of worship except Allah, and that Muhammad is his messenger. How do we know that? Because when <clears throat> the Sahaba, Osama bin Zayd, was fighting in the battle. So authentic hadith. And imagine, we're not fighting in the battle like we fight today with Allah Musta'an, heavy artillery, you know, bombs, um, shelling, no, they were fighting with iron like this, ding, 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 in the shield. And then, you know, somebody, ding, ding, and somebody pick him up, you know. You, ding, ding. So what's possible? You fight an opponent, you stab him, and then you turn, and you battle somebody else. And then it's possible the one that you take out, you got him, but this guy's the most fierce, and if you don't get to jump on him first, he's going to get you. And that happened. So when Osama bin Zayd got to jump on this guy who was like, he was a marksman with that sword and he was good, he was one of the best. Whoever he came in contact with, he wiped him out. So as soon as Osama bin Zayd went to get him, he said, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. Can somebody look in his heart at that point and say, you're faking, mm -hmm. and kill him? Can somebody look in his heart and say he's sincere? And hold the sword? No. 
It's between him and Allah. Uh-huh. And we got off the subject because we're talking about A'rab. That they are the most, or from amongst the most stubborn. And the guy who grabbed the Prophet and said, be just. Because he wasn't completely satisfied with the Prophet gave him of the charity. And the Prophet said, give him. Don't harm, harm him. Let him go. He'll give him more. And when he left, the Prophet talked about people that will come later. From this guy's descendants, he will make the Muslims unjustifiably outside of Islam. So we're talking about those people. And what makes a Muslim? Because this obviously has to be defined. If they want to make a Muslim outside of Islam unjustly. So here, Simon bin Zayd killed that man, believe it or not. And we're talking about at the same time what makes a Sahaba. Stay with me. Versus a Muslim. Killed the man. When the smoke cleared, meaning the war was over and it reached the Prophet, between him and Osama bin Zayd, he told the Prophet the story and the Prophet said this to him. Aqatalta man qala la ilaha illallah? Aqatalta man qala la ilaha illallah? Aqatalta man qala la ilaha illallah? Have you killed one who has said La ilaha illallah? Have you killed one that has said La ilaha illallah? Have you killed one that has said La ilaha illallah? Like if you lost your mind? Of course, Osama bin Zayd replied back to the prophet. With nothing. With his head down like this. With regret. And Toba to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But before that took place, and him telling the Prophet the story, he told the Prophet why he did it. He said, he said, La ilaha illallah, and I put the sword on him, took him out. The Prophet said to him, You kill somebody, said La ilaha illallah. He said, responding back the first time, he said, Yes. He said, Because he only said it to save his life. He wasn't sincere. He only said it because I had the up on him. Mm-hmm. And you know he was one of the best, Ya Rasulullah. So when I got the up on him, he said it because he know the blood of the Muslim can't be shed by the other Muslim. Mm-hmm. Okay. Then the Prophet said to him three times, rebuttaling this, showing disdain to this ideology. Said to him three times, have you killed them? Make them understand the seriousness of what he said and what he did. You killed somebody who said, La ilaha illallah? Meaning, forget what you just told me. The reality is, he said, La ilaha illallah. And how do you know he wasn't sincere? So, this is what makes a Muslim. Of course, yani, you have to do something. There's a difference of opinion whether or not, if, even if you pray, if we leave Islam. What Sahaba, with one law alayhim ajma'in, they took the position that if you leave Salah, Allah should leave Islam. And they have texts for this. And this is the strongest opinion going back to them. Where now, you will find most of the people saying the opposite. Look how the time has changed. How could it be the strongest opinion with the greatest people and later on the weakest opinion? Allah Musta'ah. No Sahaba disagreed or argued with those who said, Whoever leaves the salah, he's a kafir. Because that's what the Prophet said in Sahih Muslim. That which makes the difference between us and them with the law. Al-ah. Means you make a contract. That's what ah means. The contract between us and Allah versus their contract that they don't have. If we die, Allah guarantees us Jannah. It's not only the Shahada, but that we don't abandon the Salah. Whoever leaves the Salah, he has disbelief. This is what the Prophet said. So they didn't disagree in that. They understood that, Yani, if you don't pray, you're not a Muslim. Later on, People came and they revised the issue after those great generations died. And they said, wait a minute. But suppose it's out of laziness. Of course, the more sin you do, the more your soul becomes relaxed with sin. 
and struggles to do that which is right. obedience. Mm -hmm. So a person could, yeah, I need, for lack of a better word, mess up his time, waste his time, get complacent with nonsense, joke, TV, comedy, and he's not, she's not going to want to pray. Because the soul has to want to do it mm -hmm. to make the limbs follow. It's not the limbs do it and the soul wants to. The soul has to be inspired first. Allah will hear the qalb. Is it not the heart? The heart got to want to do it. So I said maybe somebody, and he, he doesn't do it, disobeying Allah, but he believes that he has to pray. As long as he doesn't deny the obligation, which this is a type of kufr, you leave Islam. And this is Salah. So what about practicing Islam in 2013? Somebody doesn't believe that this is kufr. This takes you outside of Islam. But because they're ignorant, we hold up on the verdict and we teach them first. Because they may have an excuse, Yom Qiyam. And if they have an excuse in front of Allah because they were that ignorant, they were misled, then how can we pass the verdict on them? So, so this is called Uthr bil Jahl. They get an excuse because of sheer ignorance. But that only lasts so long. But the origin of this, if we leave Salah, we leave Salah. Okay. So what's the point here? Yani, the man said, La ilaha illallah. Of course, you have to develop the stage where you do this and do that, and this is the ultimate Muslim. But Muslim here, of course, you believe it in your heart, 